all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back updates and information as see the what in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news is dropping you go be the first we will collect them well, yeah, let's go down to the news proper as see the world. You don't show it for the Obodo as I go to bring you information one by one as see they happen for this country. Uh, remember, say, uh, na, uh, oil model, born near. I see there be a uh, protest on rock, UK, Canada, issue security alert to citizens in Nigeria over the upcoming protest. Uh, the UK government. And the US government, Canada government have started to issue security alert based on the upcoming protest that is about to rock the Nigerian nation as it is. Everybody is tired. The citizens are very tired. Individuals are tired. Even government workers, some of these people has grown tired of what is actually happening in the nation. And um the issue is who is going to be the scapegoat. Of course, you know how it is in Africa uh, when the citizens want to protest for their rights. You see the government coming up with a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of things, a lot of things come up uh, whenever the government, whenever the citizens want to protest for their rights. And if you ask me. Why Mazen Nandekan also is still in the DSS detention is because he is protesting also for the right of Ndi Ibo. The government we have in Nigeria does not want anybody who knows their rights. Uh, you can imagine a government that wants to be leading fools. That is what they want. They want their citizens to be only fools. They want their citizens to be, to be nonchalant people. They want their citizens to be all kinds of people so that they will be able to rule them. That's why the standard of education in Nigeria has been bastardized. The standard of every other thing has been bastardized so that the government will be able to have a, a free hand in order to be able to manipulate the citizens. Let's go down to the full detail of the information as the August 1st protest is coming fast by and a lot of people are wondering, how is it going to be? What is actually going to happen? How is it going to take place? As it be, uh, the protest against economic hardship scheduled to hold nationwide in August. Protesters gather at the Lekki Togate in Lagos in October last year before the killing. The United States, United Kingdom and Canada have issued security alerts to their citizens in Nigeria warning of potential violence during the planned protest. The development comes at the heel of a planned nationwide protest against hunger and hardship slated to take off from August 1st, 2024. In separate travel advisories, the three countries cautioned their citizens to avoid areas where confrontation between security agencies and protesters might occur. In its advisory, the U.S. mission in Abuja urged Americans to avoid the rallies, advising them to stay clear of crowds and demonstration and stay updated via local media. The alert highlighted the potential for roadblock, checkpoint, traffic congestion, and physical confrontation, stating, according to media reports, nationwide protests may occur in Nigeria between July 29th and August 5th, 2024, based on past occurrences, Protests may involve roadblocks, checkpoint, traffic congestion, and physical confrontation. Similarly, the UK High Commissioner warned that protests could occur between July 29 and August 10 in major cities like Abuja, Lagos. British nationals were advised to exercise caution, avoid large crowds, and stay informed through media reports, noting that previous protests have turned violent with little warning. The advisory reads, political rallies, protests, and violent demonstrations can take place with a little notice. Get advice on areas to avoid. Take care if you are visiting crowd public places or attending events which attract large crowds. All right, when I don't see, I see they happen for the Obodo. 
the UK government don't they want their citizens to say, <laughs> say I see the be, say make una clear road, oh, make una clear road, oh, make una clear road, oh. say he go hot, he go hot, he go hot, he go hot. I see the be on another information. Remember that I'm um, one of uh, uh, the Igbo icon has passed away, Mazi Ifan Oba. Um, um, our people's na uh, Oabrobani. That's why any little time you have to impact your generation, any little time you have to work for your people, any little time you have to, you know, do things for your people, for your nation, for your state, I think it's better you do it as fast as possible because nobody knows when time calls. The other day, it was the loss, the demise of uh, the president of our nation, Dibo Iwanyangu. And this time, it is Ivan Yoba, the senator representing Newi South District, representing Newi, who passed away also. But this brings me to what is actually happening in this Ohanes and Dibo. A lot of people, is, it looks as if the, the seat of Ohanes and Dibo is the seat of death, a seat that kills people, a seat that takes the life of people, a seat that damages the life of the citizens. Because um, the former Ohanes and Dibo president passed away in that seat. The other one also passed away in that seat, and now it is the uh, now the recent person is Emmanuel Iwayan. And I think that Ndibo should learn from this. If you are make the, the president of Ones Ndibo, it means that you are sitting on the seat of Ndibo with or four of Ndibo. That to say that you are meant to be a man of truth. It's not a man aqua aqua no hair abop tanuzo na join a coro. Ebuan no hair abop tanuzo na join a buru. And I think that this is what is killing, what is taking the life of the all the presidents of Hanes and Dibo. Because Alibo is a sacred land. Alibo is a land where God has blessed. Alibo is a land where God has been worshipped so far that. There are some positions that you will be occupying, and once you do some certain things, you see the thing coming to affect you. If you watch it, you you find that every single person that kicked, especially the Igbos, that kicked against the realization of the land of Biafra has suffered in one way or the other. Uh, people like Ifan Yoba was very antagonistic against. Mazinan the canon. He was solely against Mazinan the canon. Except uh, recently uh, that he started dreaming of becoming the governor of Anambra State, uh, defected to APC, wanted to compete uh, with um, the present governor Tukuma Chao Soludo. And that was when he remembered that uh, someone like Mazinan the canon is existing. And he started visiting the DSS uh, custody and all that. In other words, I think that it is high time Ndibo open their eyes and see that the seat of Hannes Ndibo is a delicate seat. That seat is very delicate. And a man who should occupy that seat should be a man of truth, a man who speak for Ndibo. He's not a man who will sell his brothers, a man who will sell his kinsmen uh, because of peanuts. It's high time also Ndibo should realize that Kicking against the realization of Biafra has consequences because the land called Biafra is a promised land. It's a land that Chukwu Kikabiyama Bineni promised his people. It's more like when Pharaoh was fighting against the Israelites. Uh, he said that the Israelites are not going to go out of Egypt. A lot of things happened to the Egyptians. I can even tell you that the hunger and hardship that is affecting the nation called Nigeria today is because of the wickedness against Ndibo. Yes. When the Israelites came into Egypt, Egypt started prospering. Some people are wondering about the pyramid, the magic behind the pyramid. The pyramid was built by Egyptians. That pyramid was built by Egyptians. 
the high uh, I mean, was built by the Israelites. The pyramid is not a magic. It was built by the Israelites. That thing came from the wisdom of the Jews. The pyramid everybody is watching today came from the wisdom of the Jews. It was the Jews who built that pyramid. The same thing that is happening in Nigeria today, it was Ndibo, and it's Ndibo that is still building the economy of Nigeria, but other people have refused to take this into consideration. Kedunde na Zwafia na Nigeria, on Ndibo. Kedunde na to container, on Ndibo. Kedunde na messy business, he on Ndibo. And you see the government, the other tribe, trying all their best to make sure that these Igbo people are well suffocated. That these people are pushed to the wall. That these people are nowhere to be found. And you see the, the repercussion, the consequences is the power of nature coming back to fight these people. You see hunger. You see death. And it affects Ndibo more. Whenever an Igbo son betrays his brothers, I think the next thing that follows is death. Ndibo, Bacharapanuna, and Yunu. Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain. Uh, and if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, uh, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you for listening. God bless you.